Cool, so welcome to the O Calamity Book Club, our new monthly podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Robert. I'm Heather. Bobby. Heather. There's Heather. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so today will be our first episode, and we're going to be covering Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Uh, you know, the book from HBO with Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman. Some other cool people. Yeah. Shy, Sh- how do you say her name? Shailene Woodley. Or is it Shailene? Or Shailene? I don't know. You know, that would make sense, too. I'm not sure, but she's one. definitely in it. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I like her. Uh, but yeah, so we're actually just going to start off and really talk about ourselves instead of the book. And, uh, and then we'll get into the book on, like, the second half of this episode. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to break it up into halves, because that's what we have to do. Ha! Huh, get it? That's what we yeah. have to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, why did we, like, decide to start a book club? Well, yeah, I this mean, is a book club. Right? We made that clear? Yeah. This is a book club with just two members. Just us. <laughs> just us. Just the two of us. A lot, a lot of friends involved in this. Well, we decided to start doing a book club because we like to read. That's true. Right? Yeah. I mean, that'd be a big thing. That and probably just, like, being able to hang out and talk about books. Yeah. As nerdy as that may sound. I was just like, so it's, like, different than, like, like music and TV and movies. Like, I feel like I can talk to almost anybody about almost anything. Yeah. They would at least know what I'm talking about. But whenever I try to talk about books with people, it's always, like, Nobody has read whatever right. one or three books a year that I'm reading. Right. Most so, people like, we talk to only have like maybe just like like five or ten like tops that they even have read. Period. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you Dude, think I'm about saying, it, like yeah. the, the type. Most of, people. of my friends don't read, so like right. that's the other part. And so like when you were like, I read books in like two days. I was like, yeah. Yeah, book club. Let's start. <laughs> I'm trying to read books at least in like two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about two days. That's a bit much for me. I just like being able to, it's different than movies, you know, like, cause you get to sit and just, it's really all up to how, how fast or how quickly you can read. Yeah. You know, you can and set that, your like, own pace. Yeah. And then when you get to like interesting parts or like you're coming towards the end of the book, which are generally like still pretty interesting. You're just like, mm-hmm. All pumped up, you yeah, know, yeah, all yeah. excited. Your adrenaline's it's like all pumping. Different like episodes that have like cliffhangers, like on TV. Yeah, and you're just like you can't wait to watch the next episode. Yes, only it's, it's the like worst. Chapters and chapters. Yeah, I hate that. I hate having to wait to, yeah, to watch the next episode, like Game of Thrones. Always Dude, happens yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I pretty much only stream stuff, so it's almost always at least in a whole season. Oh yeah, that... I don't. So without cable, I never watch things as it's happening. That's... So it's like just living the luxury life. Yeah, just and now there's so things. many shows that I can pretty much just do this nonstop. And then Netflix always drops the entire series season of stuff. Yeah, they do like, all together. They do. So you never have to wait. I like that. I like yeah. Netflix. But then you can binge watch it, and then it's over with so quickly. But that's the way I read books, actually. Yeah. I binge read them, and then I'm like, oh, it's over with now. So I read books like you would watch Netflix. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, totally. Right? That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I like, uh... I try to read books fast, but I'm so fucking slow. If I can get, like, 50 pages a day, I'm pretty... That ends up being a like solid number for me. If this I do book more, for me. it's certain cases where I'm like, I have like an extra three hours to like just dedicate to like reading. Right. Which is kind of hard to find. I like this book because the chapters are like, I mean, they feel short because, I mean, just this right here was like just like a couple pages. Oh, I picked the worst chapter ever. This one just keeps going. Not really. I mean, it's only like a few, few pages. Yeah, you know, I think that's like, are like 10 pages long. Yeah, <laughs> and when I read, I read to like get to different chapters. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, all right, well, I'm only going to read like this much. So I'll read just to get to the end of the chapter. But then sometimes it like grabs you in and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll just read one more chapter. Yeah. And it's so much easier to do that when they're short. There's yeah, another author that does that. You can just like that. bowl through them. James Patterson, he writes really short does chapters he? in his book. Yeah. 
I love his books. I know a lot of people that read them, but I I don't think I've read any James Patterson yet. I've never really done a lot of fiction either. We'll have to read a James Patterson book. At least. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah, so like, this is going to be like a monthly podcast. It's going to come out the first of every month. So our first episode, this will be dropping April 1st. So our next episode will be May 1st. And it'll be cool. Yeah, April Fool's Day. Yeah, I know. We'll Jokes. be like, we're going to drop that, and then April Fool's will come. We'll be like, oh, gotcha. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> we're not really a book club. <laughs> <laughs> we start talking about something yeah. entirely different. <laughs> we just filmed this for no reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Never put it out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I think we hit a lot of these points already. Why books? Yeah. Oh, see, okay, that's another thing. Like, I like reading. Like, I feel like it does different things. It allows me to connect different things in my brain, like, slowly. Yeah. So, like... And also you can go back a lot easier than if you're watching a show, you're like, oh, let me just, you know, go back. But, um, I was going to say something about... I noticed a lot of people talking to him about, like, um, with reading, a lot of people do audible books to where they have to just listen to it. So many people. And Actually, wonder, every time I bring up books, people talk immediately. Just jump have you to ever their done that? Books. Just listen to books. I've tried with one book, and I got like halfway through. But it's such a. It feels like I have to dedicate more time to do it listening wise, and I'm just not really into it. Like if I'm listening to stuff, I'd rather hear like a podcast where it's like people talking. Like I'd rather right. hear conversations. Instead of somebody just telling me a story, like a bedtime story. I feel like I would have a hard time, like, focusing. You know what I mean? I feel, I feel like, like I would miss parts, too. Yeah. Because I would just zone out and be like, mm. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, or, like, start thinking about other things, even. Sometimes I'll be reading and I find myself doing that. And I'll be like, oh, let me go back. Because yeah. I just, like, got caught up. Sometimes you just gotta, I don't know, like put life aside for a minute while you're reading <laughs> because yeah if you totally. let, i'll catch myself you gotta, like, like clear thinking. your brain out first yeah i'll be like how long have i been like not reading this book you know <laughs> like let me go back and i'll be like oh shit where did all this stuff happen yeah no i've definitely done that i think actually like this is the first time that like i sat there and after every chapter i tried to write like from memory like two or three like things that like key points of the chapter that was good though because that helped good. me memorize stuff later even in the book like not even going back over my notes but just the act of doing it right like just cemented it into my yeah memory. it's like it was just putting it there just a little bit deeper yeah planting the seeds. like usually because like books i mean again i don't really find myself in positions where like i'm talking about them with other people right but like when i do i always found myself having a lot harder time mem- like like remembering anything. Right. Like, I'd be like, oh yeah, I mean, it was about kind of this, but like, there are these characters, I don't remember their names. Not sure Actually, really let's what happened. Actually, not talk about this, cause... Hey, Jenny, quit putting those on the keyboard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a whole bunch of O's just popped up now. <laughs> Wood pooey. Wood pooey? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely doing, like, the notes, I think, helps me. So I'm going to, like, continue doing that. I think I'm going to start doing that. Because, like, I feel like I can to back actually the talk end, about stuff now. Like, this, that didn't work. <laughs> that did not work at all. That makes me just think, like, like having these, it's like you have to reread the book. You but do. you just have bullet points. But I read the books. book twice anyway. So yeah. I, by the third time, I was just kind of like, ah, I don't really want to do this anymore. Like, I it's so I know what it's about. I read it twice. But yet, and I mean, look at all the different colors. Yeah, it's like you ran out and had to go get more. It kind of was you like probably that. I had them had all, though. Them. I don't anymore have any of those sticky notes. Those, they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. What's that, like a hundred of them? <laughs> Probably, Probably more. more. <laughs> I threw away a bunch too once I started writing notes from the beginning. Those are the notes I just didn't get to. I was like, eh, fuck it. I'm not doing this. Yeah. I'm not making any more notes. This is just gonna. We're gonna remember it. We're gonna yeah. remember what happened and just that's that. Just roll with it. Yeah. yeah. I read the book twice. If I can't pick up that concept after after twice. Yeah. Maybe maybe I should think about doing something else in my time. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, if reading is not working for you. Yeah. You're not getting that uh, comprehension quite down. Yeah. Plus, I like the dedication of time. Kind of like... Because, like, when I watch movies or listen to, like, podcasts or, like, whatever, it is, like, I can zone out and then still kind of, like, zone back in. And even if I miss something, I can kind of get the gist and I'll just roll with it. But, like, right. with this, it's, like, I kind of like having it being, like, I have to pay attention. Yeah, I like that, too. Yeah. I sit in a room, though, when I read with, like, the TVs on in the background. Mm -hmm. I'm not watching it, but um, it's on. And I'll totally just be like, it's like just tunnel vision to the book. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm not even paying attention at all to what's going on in my surroundings. Totally. If somebody starts talking to me, I'm just going to be like, nothing. <laughs> Until it's like, hey, hey, hey. And I'm like, what? what do you want? Can't you see that I'm reading? Yeah. I don't know if I can read so much around other people. I always like, that have, would be though. weird to me. I've seen other people do it. Like... I remember I let, like, this band stay at my house, like, while they were, like, doing the small tour, and, uh, one of their members, like, literally could just, while everybody else was kind of, like, drinking or whatever, he would just huddle to the side, and he could just sit there and read for, like, a half hour, just without caring about anything going around, and, like, he could just zone right out, and it was like, wow, that's impressive. I don't think I could do that. I mean, I don't think I would. Not in, like, a situation where there's, like, you know, <laughs> hanging out with other going people. On, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I guess for, like, if you're trying to find your own, like, kind of, like, me time, and you're, yeah. like, this is how I'm going to, like, settle for a moment, just, like, fuck off people. Right. I had that weird, like, Matilda life. Not, like, to the extent of... You know, what Matilda goes through. You've, re you've seen Matilda, right? The movie? A long time ago. Well, you know how, like, her family's all, like, into the TV? Yeah. And they watch that one show where they're, like, they get in the that big thing where there's money flying around and they have to try to grab as much money as possible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and then the, um, what was it? The Wormworths or something? Was there the last name? I don't remember that much, I don't but remember. Yeah. I feel like that's probably right. But uh, <laughs> they would watch the TV and, like, that was all they would do. And Matilda would be sitting there in the dark reading. And they're like, what are you reading that book for? But oh, my yeah, parents weren't okay, like that. Yeah, they totally. were just kind of like, hey, stop reading in the dark or you're going to go blind. And I'm like, all right, do you well, want me to do this? yeah. I, I like the company of other people, but I don't, I can tune it out. Right. I can, I can do that with a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely do it with, like, the TV on and just yeah. ignore that entirely. It's just when people start, like, trying to directly make conversation with you, you're like, all right, I'm not that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to take it back a step here. Cause... A lot of times I'll end up just putting on, like, music, like, instrumental, like, kind of bands that I like. Like, there's this band Explosions in the Sky, and I'll just put that on, like, low in the background. And it's just the instruments? There's no singing? Yeah, there's no singing. There's nothing for me to concentrate on, so it's just, like, real peaceful. Right. And it's, like, also, like, I don't know, like, quieter music that, like, it makes sense for, like, book time. Whereas yeah. in my regular life, I might, like, not want to, like, listen to it while I'm driving because right. I'm, like, come on, give me something to, like, so, like focus in on. Right, right. So I sing along too badly. At least in my case. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> totally. No, 100%. 100%. My singing is not on point at all. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm in now. <laughs> yeah. Got that shower singing. I feel bad for, you know. See, I don't do shower singing, but I do, like, bad car singing oh, I do. all the time. I do bad shower singing. Where Especially, like, like screaming stuff. Like, I like to do it, but I sound horrible. My like, voice it sounds like a, a yelp. Mine sounds like like noise until it starts to get to the high pitch and then it's just silence <laughs> <laughs> you just straight you, your voice is cut out yeah it does it's like <laughs> we don't do nope. that dude <laughs> and then my head hurts so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something wrong is not it's just not right yeah you're doing something wrong something something wrong yeah completely it's in vocal lessons or yeah so what else is gonna happen so so we're going to be doing, like, this monthly podcast. It'll be in, like, video and audio form. But eventually, Good God. we're not sure how soon. We have a cat running around here, and she's, she's going crazy. Um, yeah, we're not sure exactly when, but we're going to end up doing, like, bonus, like, YouTube uh, videos as well. But oh yeah, within a month or two, 
that'll probably start trickling in. So there'll be things that are happening more than just once a month, but as far as like the book club, discussing books that we've read, that'll be once a month. Yeah. Which is probably enough. I don't read probably. that much. Like I guess, like the idea of doing it like once a week scares me. Yeah, I mean, I I'm could. Like, I don't think I can do that. I could probably, but at the same time, it's like, what about when we have like super busy weeks, which happens yeah. a lot. You know, like we don't want to like there it is overwhelm ourselves. <laughs> I told you, I knew that uh, was gonna my happen. Glasses are so broken. <laughs> I can't even tape, but like they're broken at like just like the wrong place that I can't just comfortably tape them together. It's like they're broken like at the very end, right? So yeah. there's like nowhere where you can tape them except for the like the like front. Like I have to like connect it to like the front right. and like try to hang it on there and then just push it into place and hope it doesn't fall off. Which is seems to be working 50. out for you. Yeah. Well, it's only broken once so far, so. Let's see. I get new glasses next week, though. Really? Hell yeah. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, I totally went to the doctor. And I thought, I thought that I went to, like, this real cheap place, and I thought they were going to give me glasses. Like, I thought it would just be on the spot. Like, I just thought it was, I was getting cheap shit. And they would just make me cheap shit on the, on the fly. Have you never gone to the doctor to get glasses before? Or? I mean, yeah, but they were always, like, I mean, where'd you get proper. that? Like, it's just some dude on the street, you're like, hey, those look like some nice felt, glasses. Honestly... <laughs> just slightly just off the street wait no but you wore contacts up until like two years ago were those glasses from before you were wearing contacts no this is when i got these when i quit <laughs> i got these instead of you make it contacts. sound like it's like a bad habit i i got these when i quit yeah these well <laughs> i mean it probably was like i used to like uh overwear my contacts like horrifically your road to recovery glasses yeah like, I would wear, like, they would be daily contacts, and I would get three to six months out of each pair. But you gotta, like, put them in stuff and, right? I would go to sleep with them. You're not supposed to do that. You're if not I know supposed anything to do about glasses. Like, the ones I had were contacts. ones you put them in the morning, and then you throw them away at the end of the day. One-time use. One time. And you wore them to sleep. Uh, for, like, three to six months at a time. Like, what? I would make, because they're expensive, and I was so poor that, like, I would buy, like, a, you know, a 15 or 30 day supply and make that last a year, essentially, something along those lines. It was not smart. I'm imagining so then, that's like, when I when I decided that I should get glasses, at least to like wear my contacts later, I yeah. was like, you know, I should probably just not wear contacts for a while. Yeah, you don't sound like a responsible contact wearer. I uh, am. Yeah. You take that out of the playbook for good. Just yeah. call it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need <laughs> to take that. Like, I have, like, one, like, spare pair. Spare pair? Yeah. So, like, if I'm in a bind, I know where they're at. They're probably expired, don't they? Isn't that a thing? Well, when the time comes where I need them, I will find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I don't know. Do they expire? Why would they expire? They're sitting in alcohol. I'm Some version of alcohol. I'm almost positive that you could get anything and it'll have an expiration date on it. No. Okay. You look hard enough <laughs> at the like tag on your shirt. That probably has an expiration date. <laughs> yeah. No. Not really. No. <laughs> like, maybe. Do they? Is there, like, in the no, fine water, print? Like... like, water bottles, I'm pretty sure they have expiration dates. It's not, it's not so much of the fact that the water expires, I think it's the plastic. Just like bleeds into it. I don't it. know that for sure though. I'm just talking out of my ass. But that I makes think, sense, uh, I think I that is. I see that. I yeah. think that's how it goes, I don't know. Yeah, I never really thought about looking. Right, because they say not to put like water in the car when it's hot and then yeah. put it back in the house when it's cold because they're the plastic, right? Yeah. It does something like breaks some shit down yeah i could water. imagine like the heat like heating it up and like letting things into it no i'm drinking uh, plenty of water bottles that were <laughs> left in the car and doing a okay right now yeah i'm more of a city water kind of guy i have a well straight from the tap so you fill up a glass and it's like brown oh, you're God. like oh shit it doesn't look like this when i'm just yeah, regularly I using your it. well is broke <laughs> how well water's supposed to work actually it's just like it's not straight brown it just has like like minerals in it or like you know like if you pour a glass of city water it just it's clear oh, yeah well but then if you pour well water i don't know ours is kind of it has like this like white 
fogginess kind of to it. But you just have to like ignore that. What? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's very slight. It's not. I've seen worse. But... It's a little slimy at the. <laughs> yeah. You dip your finger into it and the residue is left. Got like a little film over <laughs> top of it when like you just sit, leave it sitting there. Yeah. Gross. Oh, shit. There's the cat. There she is again. Her yeah, nose is like ridiculously pink. That is a pretty pink nose. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. There's the cat. Put her nose up to the camera. No. I don't want to torture her. I don't know if she's camera shy, if she's into this. I was going to say, you got a hair like just... Woo. Yeah, I know, dude. She's like shedding now. I got to buy a brush. Oh, I guess it's that time of the year. I don't know. It's weird because she's an indoor cat. I think they still milk. Do they? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Cause she'll have, I think she does it multiple times a year cause there'll be like just patches of time where I don't know, Trashy lives outside. I notice it, and then other times where I'm like, oh yeah, you stop shedding, that's way better. Yeah. Do that more often. Yeah. And then it's like, once they start shedding, you could just keep pulling it. Keep, like you just yeah. brush them and it just keeps coming. It's in my mouth. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> cause you were just holding her, got all over you. It just Fans like. blowing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought I'd turn that off. You did, I'll but be it... Not damned. Damn. <laughs> Wouldn't it still be I'll be, I'll be damned? Yeah. Technically. That's the right way to say it. I why think, you, I, was in, I, think I was, like, thinking to myself, hey, don't cuss. You've said that word earlier. Did I really? Yeah, it was like... I try I to read books, books fast, fast, but I, I'm so I'm fucking slow. slow. All right, well, I guess that's out the door. Good thing, like, <laughs> this is our first episode, and nobody knows we exist. Anything goes. Yeah. Anything we're, goes. We're definitely not getting ad money or sponsorships <laughs> based on this episode, so it's okay. We could probably cuss as much as we want. Yeah, probably. Yeah. This is the one that's going to be It would be, be really views. cool, though, like, at some point, if people paid us. Real life In some dollars. fashion. I'll take it. Yeah. Even, like, five bucks. I'd be like, thank you. Cash. Check. Straight to Doesn't Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Already got this money earmarked. Yeah. <laughs> Go get you a bean burrito. Isn't that what you get? Dude, yeah, Taco Bell, the cheesy bean and rice burritos. <sighs> nah, dude. Especially, like, nowadays they're a smaller, but, like, way back in the day, like, ten years ago, when they first came out with it, it was a half pound. So I could literally go there and for like a dollar, it would be like, I would just get one burrito and be like super full. It's because there ain't no meat in there. That's yeah, why it's a no dollar. Meat. It's all just like fucking beans and rice. And cheese. And cheese. What kind of cheese though? Is it that like nacho cheese? It's like nacho cheese, cheese yeah. No, oh, it's great. good. Sometimes I don't really dig the rice, but like it also is a little bit. It's a little hard. It kind of... They always put the cheese and the rice on separate ends of the burrito. So you'll have like... They don't ever spread it apart. It's never. It's like mouthful of even. this, and then you're like got the gut end of the shit falling out of its asshole. Like, yeah. oh, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the only thing that makes me mad about Taco Bell. Yeah. It tastes so delicious, but it's always, yeah, you have to get through. You always hope that you start with like the cheese side, because then you're like, wow, this is great. Yeah. And then you end with, like, the kind of shittier side. Yeah, because if you start with the other side, the cheese will just come flying out because you're going to end up pushing it all at the end. Yeah, Unless yeah, you're, like, yeah. like pushing it while you're eating. But even still, I feel like that'll still, like... Yeah, it's going somewhere. Right out the bat. No matter what. Yeah. Hopefully you save your wrapper. I guess Doesn't everybody? It. Yeah. I keep it in the wrapper. Do you think there are people out there that will, like, take their tacos out of the wrapper, ball it up, put it in the trash, and then try to, like, go from there? I'm positive that has to exist. <laughs> I know I've seen people do that. Uh, oh, or oh, I've you know what really people. bothers me? People I that I'm also not a fan of hard shell tacos. What? Although I love nachos. Mm, I like hard shell tacos. Hard, hard shell tacos. I like hard, hard, hard shell tacos, but I would prefer a soft taco. I feel like I ate Taco Bell last night. From my memories of eating the hard shell tacos, it always breaks where I don't want it, it to does. break and every time. It's just a pain in the ass to actually finish. I was actually without eating. it just being like a pile in my hand. No, no, it, it is every I'm time. Like... I was like stuffing <laughs> shit back in the taco, and I'm eating like all disgusting. And I look over, and Derek's like watching me. 
<laughs> and because he's waiting for me to give him another taco, and I'm like, ah, oh, oh, I look like <laughs> this looks really bad right now. All like, all my hands were covered. I just can like go like this, and I could just see it. It was disgusting. It was oh, worth wow. it. It's yeah, worth it. totally worth well it. Well worth it. Yeah. It's never a reason to stop, but it's just an inconvenience in the movie. Popsicles! I was going to say, I hate people that eat popsicles, but they'll take them out of the wrapper and then just like dispose... Derek does that. Disposes of the wrapper mm -hmm. and just eats too. the popsicle, no wrapper. Okay, I don't understand what's wrong with that. You have an entire stick. What are you doing with the wrapper? So it... If it starts melting, it's not gonna get all over your hands. If it's melting, you're not eating it properly. I don't eat it quick enough. My my <laughs> brain freezes, my teeth get cold, and I'm just like, Oh no, ah! it's going. There's a lot of this going on. I need a cup. <laughs> yeah, you don't use it like a bowl? Something no, there's convenient. a wrapper. Why would I use a bowl when there's a wrapper conveniently there? Although, Maybe. by the Maybe. end of it, it's kind of like smeared onto the wrapper. A little bit, because it does kind of start to melt a little bit. Yeah, I'd be afraid that it would drip like and head to the outside of the wrapper, and then you'd have a whole another problem. No, that's handle. not a problem at all. That's not a problem. You hold it from the stick; the wrapper is just around it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe. And then you just pull the wrapper down. But what if you have like one of like the bigger like ones, and like the wrapper is not quite. There's big more enough. likely it's gonna melt, and you're not gonna finish it in time. So it's definitely a good time. To use the wrapper. Yeah, stuff. but like I still just can't imagine like the wrapper's gonna be enough space to it like It holds really the fucking contain. popsicle. What do you mean you don't think it's gonna be enough space? It's clearly gonna be enough space. That old yeah. son of a bitch could melt and it would go right <laughs> into that wrapper. It holds it. Yeah, maybe you're right. It might drip out of the bottom though because it's been a while since I've had a popsicle. I'd probably have to agree with that. They make my 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 brain hurt. Yeah. A little bit. My teeth. I have sensitive teeth. Mm. Cold stuff. I'm more just like straight up like, yeah, I'd rather have just ice cream in a bowl. Ice cream. Or like Sonic. The Sonic Blast. Can't say I've ever had that. What? They've got it's all like sorts of different drinks It's like the Dairy Queen though. Blizzard, except better. Is it ice cream? It's ice cream. Oh, I thought it was going to be it's one like of those a blizzard. things. No, no, no. It's like where they have all the ice cream piece, like you can get like Oreo and it's like all up in it. Hmm. But it's like, it's a lot like a Dairy Queen like blizzard. You can hold it upside down, and you're like, oh yeah, it's not falling. They're supposed to do that, I think. Yeah, or they're supposed get, to like, show it to you. Yeah. Or you can get it for free or something. Yeah, I would never or be that person, to. though. Like, if they didn't do that, I'd be like, Dude, oh, hey! I fucking would. Free! <laughs> like, free! You say that, but I don't think you would. If I'm in a Dairy Queen... No, you wouldn't. Yes. There's so it's much lighting in a Dairy me. Queen, I can't... It's, it's already... Like, I set foot in a Dairy Queen, and I'm like, all right, here we go. In the Dude. Dairy Queen. Well, the one by you is like walk-in, but like there's the one by me that's like drive-through. So I don't have one of those. Yeah. And there's always like three employees standing there, and they all are all like, <laughs> "Is she doing it?" <laughs> no, just watching you the whole over. time, just the uh, whole time. Like when you're about to order and everything, and then you gotta wait forever. Mm -hmm. And then they flip the thing. I just can't imagine ever being like. Oh, you didn't flip it? You didn't flip it? Yeah. Give me back my three dollars. Uh, yeah. Because then I they have would. to refund your money. Because by the time they give it to you, you've already paid. Yeah. Refund away. What? Hey, like, do your job correctly. You're becoming a person. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we're still getting a grasp on the whole, like, video timing um so i hope you enjoyed that random commercial that just played or i don't know what it's going to be yet it might just be like a little whoop like a batman yeah uh scene changer yeah scene in betweener do 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 us changing chairs yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh we could change chairs musical oh, chairs no. yeah or just us running back and forth fast paced speed up the video <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> yeah mm. Cool. Maybe. But anyway, yeah, so we are going to talk about Big Little Lies. Yes. From Leanne Moriarty. That was really bad. The first one I liked better when you said it. Moriarty. <laughs> what did you say? Moriarty. You said you knew somebody with that last name once. How did you say it was pronounced? Moriarty. Oh, you're probably right then. Yeah, you I'm just pretty sure. sounded like French just now when you did that. Yeah. Moriarty, give me a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> just me getting lazier with it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Totally. My, like, almost speech impediments. 
Or, well, we might as well talk about what we know about the author. Yeah. We didn't do a whole lot of research. Yeah. We didn't, I don't even think we wikipedia her. Is she from Sydney, Australia? I know she's Australian. Yeah, I know, yeah. Definitely Australian. Definitely Australian. But yeah. what was she, the, the first one to be on some sort of a bestseller? Yeah, she was on the New York, so first Australian to top the New York bestseller list, I think. It's impressive. And then she's got like six or five other books that are also like international bestsellers. Makes sense. This book was really well, really well written. Yeah. It was a tongue twister. She's got a bunch of books before this one. I was yeah. kind of surprised. Yeah, like That were one. like popular too. The Husband's Secret. I want to read that because when we got this book, it was like... Oh, because like that's the thing on the front and normally they take like a really good, you know, one of your best to be like, oh, also the author of? Bam. Oh, yeah. You know? So yeah, I would imagine. I think that one was like her like previous like big seller. Yeah. And this one, I, I imagine the only reason I know it is just because of the HBO show. The fact that it was turned into that. So I, I didn't even know it. there was a show until we started See, reading the book. It's funny how, like, life works. And then I read, I, I watched the show, and I didn't like the show as much as I liked the book. Really? See, yeah, that's where I've only watched the first couple episodes. Yeah, I definitely And that was, like, when it first came out, and then I stopped having access to HBO. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which actually worked out great, because, like, I couldn't remember any of the plot lines, because, you know, I didn't really pay that much attention to the show. Right. But I had, like, faces to, like, attach to all the characters, so, like... I didn't need a whole lot of, like, character description to, like, have, like, a picture running in my head. Yeah. But if I remember correctly, where are my notes that I took? Do you still have those somewhere? Yeah. Because I took down hair colors and stuff about different characters, and I want to say that they don't, don't match. Really? <laughs> yeah. Where is it? Uh, oh, right here. Yeah, because, oh... Even with Madeline, right? Madeline? Mm -hmm. Or Madeline. I guess you can interchange those. She has dark hair in the book. And obviously, Reese Witherspoon does not have dark hair. Yeah, super blonde. And what is Celeste? Is she the same? Oh, I never got to Celeste. Damn. I feel like she might have been different, though. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did, um... Oh, crap, what's her name? Jane? So Jane's, like, one of the main characters in the book. Yeah. And, uh... In the book, though, she gets her hair cut, like, towards she the end. Does. does she do that still in the show? No. No, she does See, not. See, I don't, like, I remember watching some other, like, commercial or something. You know what else? And it was towards the end of the what would be the book. Oh, yeah. In the book, her hair was pulled back into a ponytail, remember? And in the show, it was just loose. Oh. And she also chewed gum in the book. Yeah, constantly. That yeah. was, like, her whole thing. She didn't do that in the show. That's weird. Did she smoke yeah. cigarettes? Uh, <laughs> no, no, she didn't. <laughs> but like, it, to me, that was just strange because the the whole thing with her chewing the gum was because it was directly related to that night with Saxon Banks. Oh yeah. Remember, because he said that she, like, among like being fat and ugly, he said that her breath stunk. Right. And that was something that stuck with her, and she was. And they made like multiple so, notices yeah. in the book, like people would be like, "Hey." She's always chewing gum. What's always up with her? Chewing gum, but yeah. they didn't do that in the show at all. But that's weird. That I seems imagine like that it would be an easy way to like add a whole lot of extra context to the show without. You know, I think they made it hard uh, because <laughs> number two <laughs> spoke too soon. <laughs> you gotta get one for each segment, you know. Yeah. At least that's good. Good. It won't happen again. But I was gonna say <laughs> that uh, I think that maybe they didn't focus on her chewing gum in the show because. Um, that would probably be hard, being an actress and having to chew gum constantly and then trying to, like, say your Actually lines, talk. right? Or they Maybe. probably have movies like where people, people do that. people chew gum and talk, like, all the time in real life, right? Yeah, probably. I don't I mean, know I why they I feel like that out. shouldn't be considered, like, a special skill. I feel like skill. I have made a lot of points to try to figure out why they left things out in the show, but it, there's probably not actually a reason because there's things in the book they left out. yeah. And it's just, like, they went entirely somewhere else. Like, Madeline cheats on her, her husband in the show. And That's she doesn't wild. do that in the book, which really, I hated that, because I, like, she doesn't come off like yeah. that in the book. She's not that type of person. Like, she feels, like, very devoted to her husband and, like... Yeah, even with, like, towards the end when she, like, started uh, asking her husband, Ed, yeah. about, uh, you know, covering for Bonnie for the killing, and... It was all for Nathan, but, like, you could tell, like, in the book, it seemed like 
Like, she wasn't even interested in Nathan. It was just right. kind of like, uh, let me do this favor for this right. dude that was really special to me. Right. But maybe subconsciously she was only doing it for Nathan. Yeah, and I think they, like, allude to that. They do. But but you don't ever, I don't ever get the impression that, she, like, she would cheat on Ed with no, Nathan. Or, like, no. there was any of that. They seem to have, like, a... Who did she cheat on? Uh, in Ed the with? show? Yeah. A guy that's not in the book. He was like a manager, which is strange because I thought she was a manager at the Pirawi. Pirawi? Is that how it is? Pirawi Peninsula? Mm-hmm. P-I-R-R-I-W-E-E, I, -E -E, I want to say. That sounds right. It feels right. Yeah. But anyway, um, I feel like she was supposed to be the manager. I wrote it down. This is why we take notes, folks. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that the theater? I thought, I only remember her working at the theater. I'm preaching, taking notes, and I have like two pages that doesn't even cover the whole book. <laughs> oh, here, Well, wait. as long as you fill in the gaps for my notes. Uh, she's a marketing manager. Oh, okay. Oh, so, yeah, at the theater. Yeah, at the okay. theater. But in the, in the show, uh, there was a guy who also worked for the theater, but I feel like it was her boss, and that's who she cheats on Ed with. Oh. Yeah, it was... It just seems like a weird extra twist to throw in. It didn't need to be there. Yeah, you could have cut that out and added more gum chewing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's That's a lot what, of things you could have done differently here to kept it closer to the book. Yeah, it just felt like they just added and excluded things that really didn't need to need to be done. Yeah, I always find that... I mean, I guess it's like one of those, like, they can put their own stamp on the story by doing it that yeah. way, but... Like, in a case like this, like, even for, like, how long, the how big the book is, I feel like you could almost get away with doing everything in that, especially over, like, ten episodes. Yeah. Like, you can, you could actually, like, just straight up take the book and bring it to life. Right. It's not like the Lord of the Rings where, like, when they cut out, like, a whole character arc, you're kind of just like, well, yeah, you probably needed to do that because right. seven hours for this movie is just not going to happen. Right. I you know, like, I don't think, like, there's too much in here, or even too little, like... I think it's like perfectly it's pretty, written the way yeah. it is. Like, it just leaves on a good note. Everything about it, I like it. Truth. I didn't, like... I don't know, maybe it's kind of like when you when you hear a song by, by the original band, and then you hear a remake, and you're mm -hmm. like, I like the original better. Yeah. But you know what? I think it's also whatever you're familiar with. Because I've listened to a remake mm -hmm. before, before I heard the original, and I was like, I kind of like this better, the, the remake. The remake, yeah. yeah. That's kind of like what's uh, Orgy and Blue Monday, that band, I that song. I don't you know don't know Orgy? No. Really? Really. No way. <laughs> no, I really don't. With the Blue Monday song? No. Oh, man. There's no way you don't know this song. I feel but like anyway. I, I like their version way better. And when I hear the original version, I'm just like, but wow. What, this what's the song called? Blue Monday. It was originally by New Order. That's a band from like the 80s. So maybe I can understand if you don't know them. Although that's really sad for you. <laughs> I mean, I like a lot of old music. I just... Yeah. This one's just right over the head. Yeah, that's weird. Because yeah. the other one came out like the same time as like uh, Corn and Limp Bizkit. Really? And like Maybe Orgy I have were like it. part of that whole group of bands. There's always like, you know, bands. you always have like a nice Super goth. collection of music that you have heard, but you just don't know when somebody says it. Yeah, like this one, I like, I, I would be so shocked if you're like, wow, I've never heard that. That nobody around you ever played this just in general around you. Like that would be so shocking to me. Well, we'll have to find out. Maybe next episode on, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. So, I can't, like, stop, like, paying attention, but, like, usually it doesn't bother me, but, like, my glasses are super, like, they feel crooked. Like, do they look crooked? It makes crooked? you feel better. They definitely look crooked. Oh. Okay. So there's no question. Okay. There. All right. Like, I didn't think so, but, like, they're just, just they're doing weird just things. Just sit with like, me for a second. That's what it looks like. <laughs> maybe next episode this will be totally different. Yeah. Maybe. I find myself just oh, getting, yeah, like, super self-conscious about it it's in okay. a weird way. It's all right. I think normally I don't care. That's what I'm here for. Make you, you feel even more self-conscious about yourself. Oh, man, I thought you were going to help me out there. <laughs> all right, on to the next part of the book. <laughs> yeah. 
they like tackled like a lot of like interesting ish issues like in the book. Yeah, they especially did. like stuff that like you can kind of like. I felt like either I did go through it or else like I witnessed it a lot. Yeah. More so that like I feel like I didn't really connect a lot with like the book on like a personal I've been there level. Right. For most things, right. but like you know they brought up. Uh. Abigail being Madeline's daughter right. and pretty much being, like, raised by Madeline. Right, because Nathan walked out. Separate, yeah. It wasn't even, like, a, you know, where normally it's, like, the mom wants to keep the kid away from the dad for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, he was just like, nope, this isn't for me. Yeah, it and seemed just like she wished that she could do that, but, like, I don't know, like, she knew that was also, like, the wrong thing to do. Right. Whenever he, like, what, did he come back, like, ten years later? I think something ridiculous. Something that, like... I was feel a like a big chunk of time. I say like a lot. Like. Yeah. Like really? Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like it was something to where uh she I mean like the Abigail. I feel like cuz she was so much older. She was like 14 when this happened. When yeah. he, he's finally back in her life and stuff. And that just seems like old enough to where you can't fix the fact that you haven't been there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, to me, like, the fact that she was like, I want to move in with dad, like, wait, what? You just literally spent your whole life with your mom, and you knew that she was the one there and taking care of you, and now you're going to go with this, this stranger, essentially, yeah. because you don't know him. You don't know any, the only thing you really do know about him is that he left you when you were a child. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that just, to me, is just, like, it's crazy. Although, like, I think, you know, the same way, like, you ever have, like, like, you have your parents and, like, they can be great or terrible, but, like, you go to your friend's house and they just happen to have, like, what appears to be the most awesome parents yeah. to you. And you're like, oh, I could live here and move in yeah. with them. You know what? You're probably yeah, even right. Even if you don't really need to. Because Abigail's like, around that age where she's just like, she's just I'm going to go sell my virginity on the yeah. internet. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, Nathan was, like, married to Bonnie, who was, like, this hippie girl. Right, and she's younger. Yeah, so I could easily see, like, Abigail being like, oh, who's this weirdo? Right. She's cool. She does really neat things. She yeah. talks about, you know, the world and just Not your typical, being that, like, mom where do what I tell you to do yeah. and, like, dress how I say and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like, uh... Like, your parents, like, listening to country music, and then by the time you're a teenager, the only thing you don't want to listen to is it's country, country music. music. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I feel like that has to be kind of a generational thing, like, from, like, the 90s on. If your parents listen to the country, which I feel like most older people that I knew, like, that was a thing, like... 90% of the, you know, anybody over yeah. the age of 30 listened to country music that I knew, and then none of the kids did. Right. At all. Like, everybody was just like, I don't even want to, like, hear that for a second. Right. Yeah. That's where I'm at with country music. <laughs> yeah. So I think, like, just, like, that kind of, like, easy rebellion. Right. Like, right. Like, it's just really easy to rebel or without doing anything crazy. Yeah. It's like a natural instinct to do. Right. And it's not like, oh, well, he's my dad, you know? So why, why shouldn't I be allowed to go move in with him? Yeah. It's not like I'm going to go try to move in with a friend. It's and not like, like I'm trying to go sell my virginity on the internet. Yeah, which she definitely did do. Yeah, that's another, <laughs> like, weird thing. That, to me, like, that was the craziest thing, because how could they not get that taken off the internet? I don't know. Like, I feel like they should have been able to. Yeah, like, just. A little more easily. I feel like they should have just been like, hey, whoever we need to talk to, which, I mean. Yeah, who sold her the domain name? Right, but her dad helped her put up the website because he didn't realize initially that that's what it was for. Oh, really? I think I yes. missed that part. Yes, yes, he helped her. Because that makes way more sense. Because okay. it was like, she goes on to talk about how professional it looked, and he was like, you know, I helped her put together this website or whatever. Didn't realize until, like, after he did all the hard work, basically. She was just going to replace it with, like, selling my virginity. Yes. And then she puts that, like, scandalous-looking photo of her up, which mm. looked cute at first until Madeline realized that she's oh, selling yeah, her virginity with yeah. it. Like, that's she's just trying cute... to, like, look sexy to right. other people. Right. And then the guy's saying all those gross things to her. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. yeah. That's just super weird. Totally. I don't know how I would handle that if I was the parent of. 
Uh, like, I'm really glad I'm not a parent of anybody. Just, like, burn the computer. But, yeah. Torch it. Like, uh, Lock yeah. and chain, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, there, you're Your just, internet usage I think is at totally that, suspended. At that point, like, there's just... It seemed like there was too much give and take with that. Like, it was like, you take this down immediately. She's like, no. Like, I feel like if that was me growing up, there would have been, like, it wouldn't even have been, you take that down. It would have been like, this is coming down now. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, there's no anything. No discussion. Nothing. It's just, yeah. this is gone. Like, why the fuck would you think you can sell your virginity on the internet to oh, disgusting that, like, older men? I think having the, uh, you know, two parents be divorced, like, that's kind of like an extra layer, like, I don't know too much about. As either. far as, like, being a kid and dealing with right. that. But, I don't know, because you can see, like, they are, like, Madeline tries to, like, let her get away with as much stuff as she can because she's trying to also be, like, love me. Right. You know. Right. Make me look like the good parent. Yeah. You know. Yeah, instead of just, like, tr trying to discipline her like she should. Yeah, always having to look like the bad guy. Right. So you start, like, just giving people extra rope. Yeah. And then this happens. Which is tough, like, for a parent. Where do you stand? You know? Like, yeah. are you their friend or are you their parent? Are you a mesh of them both? Because you have to find some sort of a, a nice balance. Because otherwise, if you're just a, an authoritative figure, you're just constantly do this, do that. So when they yeah. come to you and they want to tell you something, are they... Do you think that they're going to be comfortable enough to yeah, talk to you? Because they're going to think of constantly. the reaction already. Right. But if you're one of the types of people that they can feel comfortable talking to, you know, it's just... Yeah. It just sounds like a tough, tough, tough job. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Because she had good reasons for it. Like, she wasn't just simply selling her virginity. She was trying to sell her virginity because yeah. of all the girls Raised that were younger. Awareness. Younger than even she, getting sold into sex slavery and everything else. Kind of just... To advocate for it, but she was just doing yeah. a very bad job. Just not really. I don't the think way she thought about, about it. it. She didn't think about it, like what it would be Especially like. Especially like, what if some gross dude p pays for her, and then he's like, "All right, Plus you ready for like, this?" Literally, whoever is paying for it is literally a pedophile. Right. Right off the bat. Like, right. There's no other. That's like the very first fact about How would you this come person across that, that you anyway? know. Like you just you're just surfing the internet, and you're like, hmm. Wonder what's going on, like, 14-year-old girls selling their virginity. Yeah. Like, how would you even come across that? Auction for virginity. Does that... Oh, 14. <laughs> That's my lucky number. <laughs> That's, That's gross. so weird, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't but know her... How those people exist. I mean, I can think about being 14, and when you're 14, you're not like, I'm so young, and it's disgusting for anybody to think of me as being anything but 14. Right. Yeah. So she clearly wasn't thinking, I'm 14, it's gross for older men to be looking at me. Yeah. She didn't think that through at all. She didn't think through the fact that if somebody did pay for her, she would be laying down in the bed with them and letting them do God only knows what. Yeah. You know, whatever sick shit yeah, somebody who pays. I don't feel like she laid down any stipulations. No, none whatsoever. Like, ugh. Yeah. Gross. Yeah, there's like so very little thought out about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I... That's all I have to say about that. It's just gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really disgusting. <laughs> but luckily... Oh, and then and then what ended up happening? Should we talk about that since we're already on the subject? Right? Yeah. With what ended up happening with her on the virginity part? Celeste paying oh, for... Oh, yeah. Or it doesn't actually ever say that Celeste was the one who... It was hinted at hardcore. It was. Like, everybody kind of, like, realized, like, oh, she probably did it because... That she letter, though, a that was a good letter that she had included there. Yeah, where she tried to be, like, some, just some old dude that was like, hey, here's enough money for you. Like, stop selling your virginity. Right. Come on now. Right. I don't want to. I appreciate from what this, you're doing. But... I understand it and all, but, like, you shouldn't do it like this. Yeah. Definitely no. <laughs> there, there are other ways to go about raising exactly. awareness and money. Right. Uh, didn't ever actually say for sure, but I think she was the one who did, especially being a lawyer and being able to think of all and the right ways access to, to money put like that where right. you know even in the book they're like you know she would get in the moods where she would just like frivolous spend or like right. on like charities like she would just give somebody randomly like a hundred thousand dollars and be like whatever yeah i'm in a better mood now and her husband didn't care and that was weird to me yeah because with the relationship they had 
it just felt like he would, you know? Care. Yeah. Or at least keep tabs on it in some fashion. Right. Or at least, like, when he's going on his violent outburst, be like, you spent my money! But that was right, never yeah. a thing. Never. Not once. Like, how much money does this guy really have? I want to yeah. know. For you to be able to just drop 100000 like, and be like, oh, you spent money? Right. I'm pretty sure the only time that they even brought up, like, him being mad or even, like, paying attention was when he when realized... When she donated all that money. Yeah. To the... Um, that, but her also getting, like, the apartment? He didn't even realize that it. He realized that because of the that text message. The call? Okay. But she was all zannied out, remember? And she had yeah. her phone in the other room. <laughs> and then while it was in the other room, he was like, oh, uh, I don't remember the girl's name, the, the, the landlord. But he said, whatever her name was, just texted you to let see if it was okay to come and check on the building or do whatever. Oh, yeah. On Monday. And then I guess, like, finally it clicked in her brain like what was going on yeah you know scary i was like oh, she's probably not even realizing because she's so high on xanax <laughs> you know like she's just like la that's of great I got that apartment. that's <laughs> great and the one kid at the and now for the drum solo <laughs> don't worry folks there's no baby in here oh shit <laughs> <laughs> everybody's okay all right so and we're back. I like that. After another technical <laughs> Every time. difficulty. Oh, that was right way louder. Okay, yeah. anyway. And we're back. I'm just trying to say action. So, like, I know, like, this is where the video is really starting. Oh, like, right, later right. later when I go to edit. Instead of having me, like, drumming on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotcha. All right, now to get into yeah. bullying, right? Isn't that where we're going to start Yeah, about? so, I don't know where we left off, but, uh, the... Battery in our camera definitely died. Yeah. And then we figured out how to get another battery. So, I feel like we were pretty much done with what we were talking about. Kind of just tying yeah. up the Abigail Madeline relationship. Right, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. We have other points too. Oh, yeah, I guess we were talking about uh, getting into like Celeste and uh, Perry's relationship too. Yeah. One of the other main characters where. Uh, I think they were even, like, the part that we were talking about before, like, we were talking about their, they have the twin boys, uh, Josh and Max, and Josh was trying to tell Max about bullying, or tell on Max about oh, bullying. Oh, that is where we left off, because she was all zany now. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, like, he tells on them, and, like, but at the same time, like, I feel like Celeste is, like, putting together... Right, like because... Like, how much, like, Perry has been, like, an influence on right, the kids and right. how, like, that's terrible. And I think that was, like, about the moment where she was, like, in her head, like, okay, I have to go. Right. Like, well, it's funny because at I first... I can now see... When you're reading the whole part about, um... When she's, like, you know, she took the Xanax because of her... I, I don't even necessarily know it was Xanax. I keep saying that, but I feel like it was just some sort of, like... I think it was an Xanax. Was I think it, it was or just was it a like pain one. It was something like that. Because she took it because he smashed her head up against something, right? Yeah. So I feel like it would make more sense for it to be a painkiller. But yeah. either way, she was in some form like... Drugged up. Yeah. And like, so when clearly, Josh... Because everybody else was like, oh yeah, you're clearly on drugs. Right. <laughs> and so Josh comes up to her and he says, Max isn't hitting uh, Amabella anymore. He's hurting sky and she's like wait what are you talking about like yeah that's and then right. it slowly all st starts like to flowing back and then that's when perry comes in with the phone like oh by the way your landlord said that yeah this shit about you're gonna be needing something to happen with the apartment yeah she always just goes back to because then the way he treats the kids right is so like looks so good and then she just keeps doing the whole thing where she's like well my situation isn't as bad as with jane where like you know, that guy that she was messing around with, that Saxon Banks guy, he was some, he was pretty bad, <laughs> you know? And she does yeah. the whole time. She compares their relationships when it actually was the same guy the whole time. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah. That's but like, I think well, I like that. That's why I think I liked a lot about the book is like, you have these the things thing. that seem like loose yeah. and maybe only like mildly connected. And then you're like, oh, wow. It's literally all about like this one dude and how shitty he is. My cat's eating food. Oh, it's like something is happening in this room, and I don't know what it is. All right. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Cat. <laughs> okay. 
So, wow. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I was saying now. That really, like, took me <laughs> off, out of my place. Uh, uh oh. Celeste and Harry. Oh, with the whole uh, domestic abuse thing. Because that was the whole, yeah. the whole part of it, is that even though... That's not what I was going to say. Uh, I wanted to get into more about how they thought that Saxon Banks was Perry's cousin. Right. But well, I, I hadn't mentioned is, that yet. But as far as, like, he James, is. yeah. But as far as Jane him being the one. Be, yeah. And then in the in the end, and they skipped this in the show, too. And this was something that really was mind-boggling. No, what I'm about to tell you is what they skipped. They, they skipped the part where, you know, because they go in into detail in the end, how Celeste could recall how when they were younger, Perry said that him and Saxon would kind of switch names. Like he would oh, be, really? yeah. Didn't you read this book? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. They no, would I switch do, names. I do. Yeah. Yeah. When they were younger. Yeah. And yeah. they would, um, like, for example, if Perry was like out of the store, like stealing or doing something he wasn't supposed to be. The person would call home and no, Saxon's right here. Yeah. He gave him his name. Exactly. So it would look like, oh, well, clearly that, that wasn't what yeah. was happening. They would just, like, play that whole thing. So to me, it just it was pretty wild that Celeste never kind of put that together. It's funny that, like, Perry did that so consistently, like, even into adulthood. Yeah. And, like, Saxon, you know, like, Celeste and everybody, like, thought so badly of Saxon. Because they were like, oh, wow, we know who this is, right. and he's your family member. But she was weird about it because she was like, I always remember him being so kind and so gentle and everything yeah. else. She's Which like, he probably just... was. Like, they have, like, that one story where, like, uh, Saxon, like, saves right. Harry. Right, And, you know, beats up somebody. But, that, you know, she probably tries and, to like, justify that's what it. They, they think about so much is, like, Saxon beats up people. Right. And that's clearly, like, as an adult now, it's just carried through. So it makes sense that... It would be Saxon. Well, then when they were talking know. about Saxon, and she was talking about knowing him, like, as Perry's cousin, she, I think she probably somehow tried to justify his behavior, thinking that he was doing it because her husband did it, and he was so well fit into society. You know what I mean? To where yeah. nobody had any idea. So why, why would it not make sense for the Saxon banks to be able to do it, too? Exactly. Especially yeah. if they're related. It's they, all in the family. Right. And that's the only thing she thinks is that it just must be something that runs in the family. It's yeah. just a sickness, you know? And then, yeah, and then you have, like, the kids who are getting, like, exposed to it. And so you're like, oh, maybe we should, like... I was pretty mind-blown finding that. out that it was Max. Yeah, I didn't see that coming at no. all. No. I mean, I knew it wasn't Ziggy. I knew so it couldn't have been. Like, it just didn't feel right. Yeah. But he still seemed kind of fishy to me. Like, I don't know if I should trust this kid. But then when you find out that he was just covering... For yeah. Amabella, you're like, oh, that's what's wrong with him. It's almost like at the beginning they painted this picture where he's just, like, too nice of a kid. You yeah. Know, it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, he has to probably be fucked up in some way. Right. I mean, other than the fact that he's, like, an illegitimate child. Truth. Like a bastard. Yeah. I guess. Almost. Well, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. A bastard somebody who... Without a father. I thought right. it was if you're not married. I don't think so. Really? I'm pretty sure it has to do with not having a father. You're a bastard. Oh, you might be right. I'm pretty sure that's where it comes Oh. From. Pretty sure. Right? No. That's not right. I think pretty it's out of... Sure. I think it's a baby made out of wedlock. Give that a goog. Uh, Googling. Bastard. B-A-S-T-A-R-D. There you go. Bastard. An unpleasant or despicable person or... No longer in its pure original form. A person born of child's not married to each other. Suck it! There it is, yeah. Oh, yeah, illegitimate. I feel like that Oh, yeah, that's the end of it. Oh, man. It I almost looks like I Googled this word this right. morning, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were waiting this whole episode yeah. to drop that on him. Yeah. I know he won't know what this means. <laughs> yeah, I should no. bet money on it. Man, that's weird. Okay. Right, because well, they call Jon Snow a bastard. Yeah. And he doesn't not have a father. He's just out of wedlock. You know, he just doesn't have a Okay, mom. I guess, yeah, never right. mind. That does, yeah. That's it seems right. Yeah. I mean, according to you and the Google. Until you get, like, really deep into Game of Thrones, and then you're like, he's really fucked up. Is he even a bastard? <laughs> what yeah. What do you even consider? He still is a bastard. Yeah, totally. 
All right, I'm getting way off track here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, this is about Big Little Lies. It's not <laughs> Game of Thrones. I could go on that forever. <laughs> but... It could be something else we read along the line. That would take forever, though. It's a lot. It's a lot of books. It's a big book. I mean, it's just a lot of one book. It is a lot of one book. <laughs> I have the book. I haven't finished it yet. We have... You know, that's like an idea that we could do, too. Like, I've, I've seen uh, ways that other people do just, like, sections of the book at a time. Yeah. I'm not saying I really want to do that, but, like... Right. I, I guess that's an option where it's, like, first quarter of the book and do all the same things that we're doing. But we could do that. It's an option. Maybe if we get like a real big book or something right. that is super like a lot of information to take in, even in like small sections. Yeah. So we're... There's a lot of characters in that book. There's a million characters in that book. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot. Plus there's all like the fantasy stuff. And... Wretch. That's one of the, <laughs> one of the synonyms. <laughs> Weird. All right, pull that other page back up. Oh, yeah. We don't need this anymore. Oh, look. Oh, you went too far. Mm, really? Mm -hmm. We're still talking about... Oh, wait. No. I don't know. I mean, we wrote down some notes about maybe talking about our experiences with yeah. bullying, but, like, honestly... I think, like, we even talked about it once before, but, like, I don't really feel like I don't I, feel like know, I was bullied. Yeah. I, I stood like up to my... I stood up for myself too much center. for somebody to, like, really pick me apart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And most kids that get bullied, which every really sucks, but most kids that get bullied don't say anything to their bulliers. Right? Yeah. Would that be what they were? They're bully. To the bully. Yeah. You know, if you stand up for yourself, normally the bullier will leave you alone. The bullier? Yeah. Stop saying <laughs> that! It's just bully! Damn it! <laughs> the bullier. Yeah, but I feel or like a lot of times... <laughs> the bully -y. I feel like a lot of times, if you just say, fuck off. Yeah. Because a lot of times the bully is dealing with shit at home and they're like, oh. Yeah, I did it right that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. What? No way. No, I definitely just said bully. Yeah, if the bully E would just stand up for himself, then the bully air would. The bully air? <laughs> Man, am I adding another letter in there too? I'm doing that know. French thing again. I, I was know, thinking that, but I was going to leave it alone. English. Are you French? <laughs> nah. I don't know. I don't know. French I haven't Canadian. done the 23 and me yet. You could be from Canada. I believe Maybe. it. Yeah. Just migrated south. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think the Canadians would take me. I don't think I can get into Canada. Really? Yeah, because they're like super hard on DUIs. Really? I got one like 12 years ago. <sighs> they definitely don't want you to know. And I don't think, and I heard like stories of people being like 20 or 30 years past like their DUI and they're just such sticklers for that particular kind of charge that they're like, we won't let your kind in our country. <laughs> so it's pretty sad. Like I can go everywhere probably, but Canada. There's another lesson for you to drink and drive. To, to not, not drink, drink and drive. drive. <laughs> Don't do that. Well then. You might not be allowed in Canada, which would be such probably a great place to be. You wouldn't know that you're not allowed there. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe they'll let me in. That would be make me so mad. <laughs> what do you mean you let me in? <laughs> you son of a bitch! This is not justice at all. <laughs> she was like eight 12 years ago. What yeah. is this even... <laughs> What about her decisions oh. in life? <laughs> we won't get to that. But anyway, I think that's about uh, about all we have to say about bullying. Yeah. You know? I don't have a whole lot there. Don't Even we... though it was a big part of the book. I feel like it could be very hard, though. If I feel like most kids that get bullied get singled out. And so it's not just normally a bully. It's yeah. sometimes like a group. Even though it's like probably mostly the one person will be doing the bully bullying. But then you have like the witnesses, right. or like and the most people time that they are just like add on. You exactly, on. exactly. Like, oh yeah, you really push that boy. To so the I feel like it probably would be really hard to stand up for yourself if that was the case. Yeah, it is kind of weird too to see like the dynamic of like the bully or uh, <laughs> just going after like like in this case, you know, it was like Max being like a bigger boy, right? Going after like the little girls, picking on girls, but that's what he knows because that's what he's seen. Yeah. So that's a whole extra level. Like, there's just, like, the basic bullying where you're just, like, it's going after, like, the small 
yeah. you know, the easy targets, but then you're like, it's on top of the easy target. He's literally doing what his father did. Right. Which, and that's like, the they would have sworn up and down nobody ever saw. Right. And then it's like, well... Yeah, but then in the end, they kind of get into it, and they're like, yeah, but this one time, I remember specifically he had to have seen us. Mm. He, she mentions it to, to Perry at some point towards mm-hmm. the end. And he's like, oh, I'll go to therapy. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And she's like, no, you won't. We've already tried talking about that. Good old therapy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, I think he was pretty far down. They've been down that road. Yeah. Maybe a little too long. To be yeah, safe. because when they went to therapy, therapy before, it seemed like the whole issue was getting out in the open and being like, yeah, we, we seem like we have a perfect life, but we don't. Yeah. And they didn't want people Plus to know that. Plus, they would have to, like, admit, like, everything, like, including the beating. And they like, didn't want to do that. You couldn't go to therapy and just talk about, like, the petty stuff, because it would probably just lead to more beatings at home. Right. I would imagine. Right. Which I think is kind of... And how do you even go to therapy about that? I don't know. I don't feel like you would feel safe. If you're already dealing with getting beat at home... Why would you want to sit down in a room with somebody else who could possibly witness you saying something that's going to tip them off? Like, why would you tell other people that? Yeah. You know, and she probably felt like that, too. It's probably why it didn't go anywhere. Because anytime she tried to speak, and now I feel like I'm mixing the show up into this because I'm picturing them on the couch. But anytime she would try to speak, um, he would kind of, like, bring it down a notch to where... Yeah. In the show, I feel like they focus on... Because they just mentioned how they had tried therapy before and it didn't work. But I think that's what they show in the show. Okay. Is them... Because they go to therapy in the show. And then it kind of just... They just are kind of putting on a show the whole time for the therapist. Right. And that's what I would, like, be scared... Like, doing... I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, I mean, yeah, I could see couples therapy working more for people that just have, like, surface level problems. Right. Not like, like a domestic just, like, abuse. Like, nag each other. Thing. But, yeah, yeah, like, the second you add in all the extra stuff, especially a long history of, like, the beatings and then, or the anger outburst. Right. All of that stuff. And then, you know, and then they switch and do, like, the cycle of, like, hate followed by, like, sex and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So weird rituals so then yeah so like even talking to a therapist you would have to literally to make it worthwhile be like oh yeah he hits me and yeah. then on top of it i forgive him five minutes later and then we have the best sex right and then i'm just left being like well i don't know what and then he like now. brings me ice and shit and is like yeah, is everything the okay best, nicest dude ever yeah he takes the care of me after running. he beats me yeah but then it makes you sit and wonder, like, how many relationships are out there that people really do sit there and they they justify the same things. Yeah. There's got to be a ton. Ton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, especially in the face of other people, like, I think the idea is to, like, sell that your relationship is good. Otherwise, right. people have, they're just going to, like, attack your relationship. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Even if it is insignificant, I think a lot of people lie about stuff just to make it look right. nicer. Or they wait till they're really mad about something and, and then, then they just up. trash out right. the person. Right. That's never a good way to do it. Yeah. That's probably why they they say to leave your relationship issues at home. Yeah. But, but it's hard. But at what point do you not leave your relationship issues at home? When you're yeah. getting beat? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, where is the line? Because there's... There's that that you hear people saying, and then there's like, well, you should come forward, but where? Yeah. Where do you speak up? Yeah. At what point do you leave? Because even with like Celeste, I mean, well, obviously Perry got pushed over the ledge by the hippie, so. Oh yeah. So that just kind of, I guess, oh, yeah. solves that problem for her. But like, even with her leaving, the only reason that she like decided she was leaving was. Because she thought the kids were being actually influenced by right. their relationship. Right. And, like, now she couldn't deny that fact. And so she was like, okay, I need to go. But, like, if you don't have all those extra things right. added into it. Like, it, like, like if, if it's you're just, just the two of you. Yeah. Like, at what point do you then decide, you know, 
maybe I should get out but of But if this. it was just the two of them, do you think she would have left? Or do you think she would have still been like, we used to have such a life of luxury? Yeah, I wonder if she would have stayed so long if they didn't have the kids at all. Right. Because she admired their relationship. She kept using that as like an excuse for why she couldn't leave. Yeah. Honestly, I think it would have been something else. Probably. You know? Like, if it wasn't... If it wasn't... Um, the kids being there, she would have been like, well, I haven't had to work in so long. Or she would just find some other reason. Yeah. She would like try to make herself out. the root problem is probably the exact same no matter what. Exactly. And then just the excuses happen to be different based right. on the situation. It almost makes you wonder about her childhood. Because they don't go into yeah. really anything about that. I don't really think they do into like almost any of them outside of maybe Jane slightly just with her... But she's so young on the in the book, at least. She's only, like, 24. The biggest thing they do with, with Jane is just talk about how her mom thinks that Ziggy's her grandfather reincarnated. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And just her basic, like, hiccups with, like, thinking about, you know, weight problems or... Right. You know, just different, like, right. mental hang-ups. Yeah. But... Yeah, I mean, just to know, like, what kind of a father figure Celeste had, I feel like that would kind of answer a lot of questions because they yeah. say that i always say that they say whoever they are they say that women will powers that be well they'll go for men that remind them of their fathers yeah because I it's comforting that too, even if your father isn't comforting so if you have an abusive father chances are you might find yourself with an abusive partner sometime later in life. Yeah. It's what you know. Like, it's just the most comfortable. Like, yeah. you know how to deal with it. Right. Even if dealing with it actually just sucks. Yeah, and change <laughs> is hard for people. Change is really hard. Yeah. Whether whether it's going to be good or not, like, just doing something different out of your routine is not easy. Yeah. You know, so, like, picking up somebody that isn't like your dad, you know, for example. Yeah. We always hear, like, I always talk to, like, people who are, like, uh... Like, they'll, they'll date people that suck for so long that, like, then they do date somebody who seems, like, really nice or just totally different, and then they're like, I Something's can't deal with, with this. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like, this relationship's not going to work. It can't yeah. go anywhere. And it's kind of like, huh, maybe you should have gave that a little more effort because, you know, maybe could have saved yourself a few black eyes or something. Right, right. You know. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. You never know. I'm not here to give anybody advice. Yeah, but. definitely. Me either. Just throwing out opinions. Yeah. <laughs> just thoughts. Yeah, just thoughts, thoughts, really. Like, I don't know. How would we know? I don't know. I feel like we pretty much covered that. We haven't had to personally deal with any of these things. Yeah. So, That's just speculation thing. at its finest, I suppose. When just something to think about. Next month's episode should be really interesting. I'm curious to see if we can connect more to the characters or the situations in it. Being that it's oh, it's going to be great. Where is that book? You got it over there somewhere. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be awesome because. <laughs> three. Number that's, three. That's three. Yeah. Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be great reading it as an adult. See, mine doesn't have any pictures in it. What's How long is the book? Um, you seem so much smaller than the ones. 176? Oh, yeah, okay, that was about what Wait, I thought. Wait, that doesn't... Seem so small for a 176-page book? Yeah, it felt so much bigger when I was a child. Yeah, maybe it's because it's paperback, too. Yeah, maybe. Because I feel like all the ones that I'd seen previously, previously... I'm just excited to see, like, maybe, like, underlying messages I didn't pick up as a kid. Mm hmm Do you know how, like, when you watch... If you go back and watch a cartoon, mm -hmm. you'll pick up all sorts of shit. Like, like as wait a know. minute! That's an innuendo if I've ever heard one. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, that was a bit like, I remember, like, Shrek. Like, that was, like, one of those, like, cartoons that, like... If you're an adult, you see it totally differently than as you do as right. a kid. Right. Like, all the jokes, they're laughing, but all for different reasons. Right. Different contexts. And it just goes right over your head as a child. Yeah. Right over your head. It's crazy because as an adult, you're like, how would a child not pick that up? Yeah. But you're like, obviously, because I was a child and I never picked it up. Totally. So, I'm excited. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, and then we're going to get through the looking glass, too. Are we going to read them together? Yeah. Yeah. And then just kind of I think we're going to do a combo. Combo. Yeah. Combo. Episode. I think it'll be good. Yeah. 
Alice's. You know, it took me a minute to realize it was Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. That seems like an absurdly long title. Is it title. the same thing? Yeah, that's just the actual, like, title. See, yeah, yours says Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. But then everything I kept finding kept saying Adventures in Wonderland. I've seen a mix. And then when I went to, like, look it up, like, the last time when I was doing these notes, like, it was just all Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I feel like it is... In the movie, I think, it's just Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, see, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Why wouldn't they print that on the goddamn cover? <laughs> I like how you paused, like, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> then you're like... <laughs> I'm still Fuck debating. It. Yeah. Wait, well, what does it say right here, though? See? Either way, it's Alice in Wonderland. And no we all know me. that. I've got this poster on my wall. I'm 100% sure <laughs> that this is the right thing. But yeah. Well, I think that'll pretty much wrap up this episode. I guess so. And so, catch us again. May 1st, we will be discussing Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Bye. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up! And subscribe. And... You know, do the other things that listeners do, like, subscribe, comment if you want. Oh yeah, that's an option. No hate. That's fine if you do, we don't mind. Yeah. It's probably I good. take criticism very well. Yeah. It won't hurt my feelings, I promise. I just gloss over most of the time, unless it's useful. Sometimes I need to hear bad news. Oh, I love listening to hardcore criticism. <laughs> it keeps me going. Yeah. <laughs> Fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. See you next time. That's a wrap. Hell yeah. High five on the sweaty hands. Could you feel how sweaty my hands are? See, that's another. See, that should be good. That should be like. My hands are thing. always that sweaty, just for so you know. Really? Yeah. Mine are a little clammy. Always. My, my room's too. pretty warm. If you felt at the bottom of my.